So welcome, Mom. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Hello, Robert. That was me saying hello. <laughs> no, I thought there was something to follow. I didn't no, know. that was just a hello, Robert. Oh, okay. Well, uh, this is the first like start at the new kind of rubric, I guess, is on how we're going to hopefully continue with the podcast this way. You know, I think we kind of share more of an insight on each other and also like, you know, kind of maybe help benefit somebody who's listening. Yeah. Because I, I think, um, you know, like I think a lot of, you know, it's no secret that we have some miscommunication mm -hmm. problems in the family. Right. And I think by doing this kind of like weekly report over you talk, I talk, you talk, I talk, it kind of sheds more of an insight on how we perceive and maybe how, like how we look at things. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like a cool, like insider look and you know, not only that, but it's also like things that we think are important. And, um, I think it's, I think it's really cool. So, um, if you're tuning in or if you didn't catch last week, what we're going to do is we're going to start sharing things of significance, you know, that we find important in terms of like mental health or mm -hmm. in terms of like some sort of, uh, you know, just whatever we deem relevant in terms of, better well-being kind of like a personal journey kind of yeah thing. like a personal journey thing or yeah. just you know just things that you know you know when they ask like who you are as a person or what's your defining like characteristics or things like that you know things that you can kind of you want to learn more of you yeah kind of divulge it yeah i kind of the way i kind of looked at it robert was mm -hmm. kind of like my path by sharing my path maybe i can help somebody else yeah totally so yeah. um yeah it's exactly and that's exactly it and okay and so what we're going to do is, you know, each week we're going to switch off, you know, we're going to piggyback and one person's going to talk, the other person's going to listen mm -hmm. and we're not, not even not so much listen, but you know, just provide so well, support. You, well, you get, you know, one person, um, basically the way I kind of looked at it yeah. is one person gets the stage yeah. and you get to, to say whatever you want, kind of uninterrupted, mm -hmm. you know, there's no debating, there's no this or that. Yeah. And then once you're done, then we can have an open discussion over what yeah. you just talked oh, about. Totally. Well, I mean, I mean, you can chime in and things like that, but well, I just want, well, really what I want to do is I just want to make sure that I don't like come up with a question and then you get sidetracked or diverted. That's fine. As long as it's <clears> relevant and the conversation i don't think it's a problem okay yeah so um so yeah so this week i'm starting it off by and now my subject is going to be about working out and and i was thinking about it and you know as i was gathering research and the, i was narrowing it down and it, you know everybody knows that working out is good for you right like right. Everyone, everyone knows that like hey you know working out's really important things like that but uh, it's more specifically i think in terms of mental health than it is um sort of uh, physical fitness mm -hmm. like obviously 100 percent there's it's it's pros and you know there's this pros to working out right you know you're stronger you know you're you're healthier and things like that but i think it, at least in terms of my point of view i i enjoy working out because of what it does to my mental health and it's it's a great boost in terms of like how i feel and how i tackle the day mm -hmm. so you know we started working out mom you and i at four in the morning every day and i remember when we first started you were really reluctant to you know get up and work out so early but now it's you know it's i, I would say it's the highlight of my day right you know it's, it's really fun it's cool and you know it's a it's a shared experience where you and i get to you know cohabitate in the same space and you know we get to work out with each other and it's a great listening and you know cooperative thing mm -hmm. and i you know I, I i personally i really like that and i know sometimes that you're like oh you know if if i'm bugging you i can always just you know i can always just walk on the treadmill or that's what you said when you yeah. first started and I was like, no, no, that's fine. And, you know, we developed, you know, a really great system. But so, yeah, so my, my topic is going to be talking about what it does for you mentally. And I was kind of thinking about it. And I started going to the gym when I was like 18. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would went for a little bit. You know, I went with um, David down the street. And Gosh, I don't yeah, even remember yeah, you doing that. David Hillen. It was David Hillen <laughs> for a little bit. And then it was a guy who worked at the, I used to work at the grocery store and the guy who worked in the seafood department, his name was Michael Tortomasi. Okay. And so I would work out with him after, after we got done working at the market. So mm -hmm. it'd be like 10 or 11. But, you know, I remember going and like, I remember going and like working out and being like, oh dude, people must think I'm so cool. You know, it, it, they call it ego lifting kind of thing. So I was like, I was lift, I was working out for others kind of thing. And mm -hmm. I really wasn't even that big. And I really wasn't even like doing any, I wasn't in any like, extreme physical shape. I worked out maybe three times a week, um, like for a couple of months. And then I had started, you know, developing a problem with alcohol. So I stopped for a long time and it wasn't until I got so, ah, no, 
I think I was still drinking when I was working out too. Really? Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. I was still drinking and working out and you know, it's kind of, it's kind of weird because you're like, I remember when we would work out, I would be like, Oh yeah, dude, I'm going to be so fit and like blah, 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 blah. blah. And then I would go and I drink like 17, 18 beers. And, you know, I think, mm-hmm. I think when you're just at that age, you're just kind of like whatever. But, um, it wasn't until sobriety hit, right. That, you know, I started, you know, not working out like in terms of like lifting weights, but we had gotten really into yoga. Right. Uh, we had gotten really into rock climbing. And, and I think the two are, are really interlinked in terms of like how I think rock climbers and yogis like experience the world kind of thing. Right. They kind of just have this cool extra, tra- or extra like just this really cool way of how they perceive the world and life and things like that. And, and I think maybe that's where I started like developing kind of like that, Oh dude, this is huge for your mental health kind mm-hmm. of thing. Like it's, you know, it's just, it's really, it's really spiritual. And I think in a lot of ways, and I love it. Well, I think both yoga and rock climbing is mm-hmm. a very like, kind of like in tune. Cause I know when you're rock climbing, it's an individual sport. Mm-hmm. It gives you a lot of time of just like self reflecting. Yeah. And yoga to me was very self reflective. Yeah. You know, and like, and I really like that in mindset. And like when we work out at the gym, right, I have my headphones in and mm-hmm. you know, I'm playing music and things like that. And it's just, it's a great way to kind of check in and, and lock into your headspace. You know, it kind of gives you, um, I don't know. The rest of the world kind of just gets put on pause for a little bit and you get to like think about things and you get to like, you know, kind of look at things through a different point of view. I know like when I go hiking and things like that, you know, I usually come up with like really good ideas or I come up with ideas that I normally probably wouldn't have come up with if I wasn't like exerting myself in some sort of physical manner. And, um, I know sometimes you're like, you will be working out and you get done with your set and you're like, Oh, I just got this great idea for this YouTube. And, um, I feel like it doesn't get enough, I feel like that kind of mental stimuli doesn't get enough credit, you know, for, you know, like so many good ideas and it's just, it's really, really cool. So yeah. So my whole thing is about mental health and and why it is. And so I actually read a couple of, I was reading a couple of articles, Mm -hmm. um, about the mental health and exercising. And it says, uh, one article I found online about, um, exercise, exercise, it makes you feel happier and things like that. And it says, Exercise has been shown to improve your mood and decrease feelings of depression, anxiety, and stress. A lot of people I know, um, I, I can't remember the, the saying, but people were saying that, you know, depression or um, overeating is the most common um, stress reliever. I can't remember. I can't remember the, the phrasing, but but basically working out isn't as utilized as like, um, you know, like if you had a really hard day, people aren't going to want to go to the gym. And so... Um, I'm going to, I'm going to absolutely misquote it, but I can't remember. Oh God. Uh, that's all right. Not forget it. Right. We'll black that part out. Redact okay. that part. Um, but, <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, it's, it's the truth though, because yeah. a lot of times people do reach, you know, food is a comfort. Yeah. yeah whereas yeah. working out can mm. be a comfort also. It's just, yeah. it's not as, I don't think it is as broadly broadcast mm-hmm. in society yeah. as perhaps like, you know, self-medicating or yeah. something like that. Yeah, no, it's very true. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for bringing that. For mm-hmm. that. And it says uh, it produces changes in the part of the brain that regulates stress and anxiety. It can also improve brain stimul- uh, brain sensitivity to the hormones serotonin and nor norepin norepinephrine she which, sounds like an actress i know which relieves uh feelings of depression it says additionally exercise can increase the production of endorphins which are known to help produce uh, positive feelings and reduce the perception of pain and this is the article continues by saying it's interesting uh saying um interestingly it doesn't matter how intense your workout is it seems that exercise can benefit your mood no matter the intensity of physical activity Mm -hmm. so i thought i mean that part kind of really like resonates because like a lot of people think like oh working out like i have to go you know like bench like 220 or i have to go to the gym or Mm -hmm. i have to do this or i have to do that and thankfully with like today's technology and today's like you know, social media, you can really get a really good workout, you know, in your, in your home or, you know, in the garage or going for a walk or going for a hike or, you know, in your backyard, there's this TikToker who I follow. He does, he's absolutely shredded and he does all of his workouts in his front room with kettlebells. Really? Yeah. He does all of his kettlebell exercises. And so like in like, it's weird because when you think like, like, Oh, I'm going to start working out. You think gym, you think like big swole muscly dudes, but there's so many different avenues in which you can like, you know, get some sort of, um, like 
workout in, you know, and that's really cool. I remember I used to like do the dance dance revolution and I remember right, I used to be right. like covered in sweat and being like, this is the greatest thing I ever, I want to be yeah. so jacked. And, and, but like, I think, it, I think more so like, I remember looking in the mirror and being like, yeah, I did it. Like you, you never really, I mean, other than instances where I've like, where I've ego lift and I've lifted for others and I've hurt myself. I, I never really leave the gym disappointed. Right. You're right. always, you're always like, well, it may not have been the best workout, but I went, you know, I may not have been, I didn't break any records, but you know what? I, I, sh- I showed up when, you know, sometimes your, your inner voice tells you not to. Yeah. And so oh, hmm? go ahead. No, I was going to say, because when we go to the gym, I have no expectations of like how much I'm going to yeah. you know lift mm-hmm. or this or that. To me, it's just, just waking up and going is mm-hmm. like a victory in itself. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like what we do that morning is kind of a, a secondary by- byproduct of the simple fact that I went and did it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like if you think about it too, like it's four in the morning, right? The last thing you want to do is get out of bed. Mm-hmm. And that's basic. And that's like your first obstacle, right? Like that's your first challenge. You're like, all right, well, I'm out of bed. Everything else in the day is going to go easy, you know, because it's so, it's really difficult. I mean, even for... Even for me, and I'm an early riser, like I'll wake up and my alarm will turn off and I'm like, I don't want to get out of bed. Right. And I'll be like, okay, I'm going to hit snooze at 4.08, my snooze goes off. Okay, I'm going to hit the snooze and I'm going to give myself two minutes at 4.10, I get out of bed, I wake you you up at 4.12 and then we get going at 4.24. And like, you know, it's not easy, but like... You know, if you're like, well, if I can do that, then I, there, nothing else in the day is going to be as hard as waking up and getting out of bed in the four. Now, do you ever find yourself like days that you might be like having a little bit more of like a struggle, like a mental struggle? Do you find that um, that's the first thing that goes out the window? Like, I'm just going to sleep in or. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, yeah, more mental struggle. Like, why am I doing this? This sucks. You know, what's one day kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But then like also too, you like, I, you know, you really have to be cognitive of, of like your mental health or not your mental health, but like the way you're talking to yourself, yeah. you know, like, like it's almost like, you know, the, the Lord of the Rings, you know, Schmeagle, how he has those two different personalities. Right, right. That's exactly what, how I picture mine. Like, Oh no, dude, don't worry about it. It's fine. Like nobody's going to know if you skip one day. Right. But then like, you know, then I, you have to like cognitively be like, Oh no, I'm, I'm psyching myself out. You know, I'm, I'm trying to give myself the easy road. And then you end up going to the gym and you're like, you know, fuck yeah, like I'm here. Yeah. You know, like, you know, if, if I can do this, if, you know, what else can't I do? Right. You know, you know, if I, if I, you know, can overcome this hurdle, there's really no other hurdles that are going to be as hard as, as this one right here. Yeah. Cause I've walked into the gym, um, just feeling like my knuckles were dragging on the yeah, ground. Yeah. And by the time we leave, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You know? And like, it sets you up for a W, right? It sets you up in that positive that, you know, because you won the first challenge, right? You're, you're in a winning mindset when you leave the gym, you know, you're like, oh, I did it. I'm here. I'm done. I, you know, I've conquered the mm-hmm. morning. Right. And so you're like, everything else is easy. And it's weird. Cause you know, like we, in the past, we missed the past three days. Um, just, you know, I've been woken up with headaches and, you know, just, you know, just life happens. There, it was raining. It was ra- Yeah, there was water outside. <laughs> it was a lot of water. Yeah, you know, and, and we had given ourselves three days off. And it's weird. On the days that we didn't work out, I I was, I don't want to say less productive, but I found that I, I got a later start on everything. Oh, yeah. And I, you know, I could definitely see the correlation that like, oh, the days I didn't work out, I wasn't as sick. I don't want to say successful, but things didn't roll as smoothly. Yeah. You know, and it, it's weird because like you look at it like, oh, I can't wait. I'm going to have so much more extra time. And then you kind of cut corners and, you know, the day kind of slips ahead of you. So well, it gets, it gets overwhelming because yeah. I mean, there's not a day that goes that I go to bed that I have accomplished everything that I want. Oh, to. for sure. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now let me ask you this. What would you suggest to somebody that was listening? Like if, I mean, would you like start small? Would you like, um, jump into something like, you know, joining a gym? I mean, I think it, well, I think it, it's so like, I don't think there's a, one, I don't think it's an easy answer for it. You know. Just your, like your opinion. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I really, honestly, truthfully, it depends on the person, right? I yeah. think it depends on what they have available to them. I think it depends on <laughs> who they, who they can do things with. I mean, I think you get a lot. I mean, I know personally as, as you know, for me, I'm very quick to cut corners. You know, if, if there's a way, if there's an out for me to take, I'll take it, especially mm-hmm. with working out. So like, you know, when I, after I got sober, I started working out, you know, I was boxing and I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and things like that. And if I didn't go there, my coach would text me, like, Hey man, everything okay. Like how can we weren't in class? Yeah. I had that accountability buddy. Yeah. So I had somebody there to like, you know, was expecting me to show up. So I showed up. Um, and so like, I think that situation, I think that's what I would look for 
for somebody who wants to start is find somebody who's a, who your accountability buddy yeah. and then, you know, do something together with somebody. See, because before the pandemic, yeah. I would go to the gym and I would run yeah. and then I, or I would do the Stairmaster yeah. or I was really very physically active, mm-hmm. but it seems like, um, after the pandemic was over, mm-hmm. um, I had a really hard time kind of just getting back into that mindset yeah. of, um, of working out like that again. Yeah, no, it's different. It, you know, I mean, you spend two years, I mean, basically two years we got put on hold basically, you know, and it's, it was really, it's really weird too. After the pandemic, how it, I still don't really like crowded spaces. Oh God, no, I was you know? at, um, where was I? We we're at Costco and I was holding my breath. That's what I was doing today. I was at, um, walking through old town. Yeah. And even though I was outside, I was like mm-hmm. holding my breath half the time. Yeah. And that, you know, that's the interesting thing too, is like when it comes to like working out, like, I mean, even just going for walks and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, just, just doing something physically, ex, you know, exerting yourself physically in any aspect. I mean, that's perfectly fine. Right. You know, because it's about how it makes you feel, not so much like, you know, what and where you're doing it. So now do you think it's more of the mental thing or more like the physical actual aspect of moving your muscles? I think, I mean, I think they go hand in hand, right? Okay. Like, so like, okay, so like, for example, you know, we've been going out to the gym for a while and I've started to see more muscle tone and I've started to see me gain, you know, bigger proportions in the, in the areas I want and slimming down like in my waist and my stomach and things mm-hmm. like that. And, you know, I, you know, I, we leave the gym, um, you know, super positive and things like that. And, and seeing the results of all our hard work kind of just helps you more motivate you. And so, yeah, yeah. So like it's physical and mental, you know, like you, you, you get more muscle strain and so your body feels better. You, your joints feel better. You know, your you look better. So your, your mindset's, you know, a little more like stoked and happy and you're, you're a lot more confident and yeah. things like that. So like, I think, it, I think working out is to me more mental than it is physical. Yeah. You know, cause you're really just, your only thing you're really doing is physically is just contracting your muscles over and over again. Yeah. But what it does mentally is, is huge. Yeah. I see. I think the gym too gets like a bad rap. Um, mm-hmm. just because I mean, especially being over 50, Yeah, you know, it's like you're, I was really surprised at how many people were my age that were there, mm-hmm. you know, just all working out and having yeah. like full respect for each yeah. other. So I think sometimes, you know, you, you sit there on social media and you see those TikToks mm-hmm. of like people, you know, talking shade on yeah. other people and that's kind of the persona you get. So sometimes I think that, you know, it can get a little intimidating yeah, starting no, that absolutely. routine. Well, that's the thing that was like, you know, especially for people who like haven't started yet, they build up like this perception of like what they think the gym experience is. Mm-hmm. And like, you're right. Like most, when we go to the gym, there's more people your age group than there are mine. You know, like in terms of like younger people, like even like, I mean, I'm 33. I don't even know if I'm young anymore, but there's only about maybe out of, out of the, out of like the 30, 40 people that work out there, there's probably only about 10 people that are my age. Yeah. You know, maybe four or five, a little younger, but most of the people are older demographic. You know, it's just, it's just, it's a cool mindset, you yeah. know? Um, now, do you find that by working out that you're, it's easier for you to keep that schmeagle voice at bay? Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. Because like, um, you know, I, I find, especially too, because it's so early in the morning, I find that like, okay, well, like what, what else are you going to tell me not to? And like, it's almost like it stacks the cards in my favor where it's, you know, where like, you know, I, I, I'm, I have that winning mentality, mm-hmm. you know, I have that like that, well, if I can do that, I can do anything kind of mentality. And it kind of sets me up for positive results throughout the whole day. Even if my day is not good, I'm like, oh, well, you know, I, I'm mentally prepared to handle these, these harder days mm-hmm. kind of thing. And it, and just, yeah, like it's, it's really, really interesting. And, and you carry yourself differently. Yeah. You know? Like, you, like you mean, you had mentioned that your posture is better. Mm-hmm. You know, you had mentioned that when we got indie, you really worried about, you know, you bending over and, you know, getting, I, I don't know, I can't remember if you said like stuck or really worried about her like knocking you over. Yeah, because, um, well, <laughs> like just a couple of days before we got indie, mm-hmm. I, I had that roller skating accident. Oh, yeah. And I couldn't, I was in walk. so yeah. much pain. Mm-hmm. But even like, um, once that was cured, Mm -hmm. just bending down and like getting down to her, her, um, her level, I would try to get back up and I'd be like, how am I going to get back up? And now it's like, um, it's not, it's no problem at all. That roller skating thing was actually really scary. I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah. I thought about it the other day too. And it really hurt. Yeah. I I don't know why we were thinking, I don't know why I thought you could jump over like a six inch noodle. (laughs) 
happen. And I don't know why I'm just like, well, if Robert thinks I can do it, I can do yeah, it. Yeah, you know, in hindsight, I was like, what can go wrong? <laughs> that. The, like worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, yeah, that I hit hard on that yeah. one. But um, but yeah, no, it's you know, it's nice. And, and it was saying that um, I also saw this thing. It says, according to the National Library of Medicine, uh, medicine health benefits from regular exercise that should be emphasized and reinforced by every mental health professional to their patients include the following. And this is improved sleep. This is increased interest in sex. It says better endurance, stress relief, improvement in mood, decreased stam- or excuse me, increased stamina and energy. And this is reduced tiredness that can increase um, meal alertness. And then it says weight reduction. It says reduced cholesterol and improved cardiovascular fitness. So like, you know, I think, you know, like it's, I think there's like this divide of like, oh, it's like mind and body are two separate things. Mm-hmm. But I think working out, it's definitely been like a connecting, like, you know, it's just, it's just been, it's been really spiritual for me to like go and unplug and, you know, just kind of like exert myself and then feel accomplished. I was going to ask you, do you feel more accomplished going on your own and working out mm-hmm. or when you were working out and you had a trainer? I mean, one, you kind of went and mm-hmm. you were told what to do. And yeah. the other one, you're kind of like, hey, you know what? I, I know what I want. I, I'm, yeah. I'm going to train myself. Yeah. Like, do you have any no, difference in that? Uh, well, I mean, the only difference was that, you know, with my trainer, Des is, you know, Des was my friend, right? Mm-hmm. So I got to go and hang out with my friend um, and we got to, we got to work out together. Um, we spent, I spent a lot more time there just because there was, you know, it was me, Des and like two other people. So we spent mm-hmm. a lot more time working out and talking, um, and, and, and enjoying ourselves. But we also, you know, it took like two hours where we can get our workout done in about like, uh, I think about 45 to an hour, Yeah. you know, now we can. So, um, I don't, I don't, I, you know, it was really nice going with Des and like learning the workouts, you know, learning how to better activate your muscles in the ones you're working on and target certain muscle groups and things like that. But, mm-hmm. um, I, pros and cons, you know, okay. I, I don't think there's, there's a right or wrong way. Um, because like, I, you know, I really enjoy working out with you now, just you and I, we can go in there and 45 minutes later, we're done. Yeah. Because the other day when we were there, I saw somebody, he was a gentleman, mm-hmm. probably about my age or a little bit older. Yeah. And he was working out with a trainer. Yeah. And I was thinking like, wow, you know what? That's really cool. If I didn't have Robert, yeah. you know, I could see how it would be really intimidating, oh, super intimidating. trying to use machines mm-hmm. that I would have no idea the proper way to use them. Yeah. So I would think like if you're out there and that's something that you do want to try, yeah. um, you know, you usually get free trainer sessions. Mm-hmm. But I like that one lady who um, always waves at us, the blonde lady. And she has her little routine down. A blonde lady. You know, the one that always wears a baseball oh, hat. hat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she has, um, you know, she's she, probably yeah, about she, my age. Yeah. and She's she been keep, there. She's, she's yeah. dedicated. She yeah. wears that by herself. Mm-hmm. You know, she does, yeah, you're right. She does have that routine. I never really noticed. Yeah, she has her earplugs yeah. in. And um, she just has certain machines that she does. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and she does them a little bit differently than I've seen other people yeah. use them. But you know what? She's consistent. And, and mm-hmm. that's just the whole thing. There is no gem monitor there being like, you're doing that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's the thing, though, is I think people, it's scary. It's scary to go there by yourself. It's scary to, it's like, you know, eating at a restaurant by yourself. A lot of people are very nervous about how people would perceive them. Mm-hmm. Where like nine times out of 10, people don't, I mean, people don't care. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but, it, but that's, you know, that's, again, that's that mental hurdle, that mental challenge that you have to overcome. And then once you get there and you do it and you're like, oh wait, hang on, nobody's really looking at me. I can work out how I want. Then it, you know, then it's much more tangible. Yeah. And, and the more you go to, the more you start developing a rapport. I mean, we've been going for a little bit and we have like 90 gym friends that we wave to, yeah. you know? And, um, and also too, like, you know, that, that's, what's so cool about social media is there's so many YouTube videos out there helping you learn these machines and lurking, helping you, um, figure things out. And so there really isn't, um, you know, people, people aren't going to look down on you if you do the machine wrong or anything. Exactly. Like that. Um, but like also there's this, there's this dude too, he does it on TikTok, and he's got this, he just has this thing where he just walks up to the biggest dude in the gym and he asks if they can work out with him. And, really? Oh, it's really cool. Yeah. He's just, you know, he's a, he's a pretty, you know, he's not super buff. He's a pretty, I don't say average. He's a little bit above average yeah. looking dude. He's just this younger kid. And he goes up to the biggest dude he can find in the gym. He goes, Hey man, like 
I'm doing this thing on, on TikTok where I asked the biggest guy in the gym if I could work out with him. Can I work out with you? And he goes, yeah, dude, totally. You know, and, and they end up having like a great rapport and they actually, you know, they, they know so much. Yeah. And so like, you know, obviously it's scary to approach somebody, but you're like, hey, dude, you know, can you show me how to do this? And yeah. You see, I never really even thought about it until that right now, mm-hmm. but a lot of times people are so in their heads yeah, and they're so like, you like you said, you be, you, you have like a moment of where you're just thinking inward and Mm. not so much outward and then people are trying to be respectful of other people you know you don't sit there and stare or or something like that i think sometimes when you're insecure in a new environment Mm -hmm. you take that kind of like body cue as like maybe somebody looking down on you sure whereas they're just trying to stay within their own their own lane totally yeah absolutely especially too because you're in a you're in an unfamiliar situation doing Mm -hmm. an unfamiliar activity right so it's perfect and you're on high alert right you're on high alert for um, you know, uh, out, outside stressors, right? Yeah. So like, you know, you could be doing something and you're, and you're very un, um, not insecure, but you're very uncomfortable doing it. And you're looking around and you see somebody just zoning out and staring and they, they may be staring in your direction. You were like, and you perceive it as, oh, this person's staring at me because I'm doing it wrong. Right. Right. You know, which is, you know, sometimes I, I catch myself staring, but I'm staring just more of like in oblivion. Um, never at anybody, but generally like at the mirror. Cause I'm like a cockatiel. Yeah. And, um, I'm they probably think I'm staring at them, but I'm just, I'm just zoning out. Yeah. Because I'm by nature, very curious. Yeah. And I have had to catch myself being like, you know what, Lonnie, that's just not cool. Yeah. You, you know, know? I, I mean, I, I'm not say, in my mind, I'm not saying like a bad mental dialogue about mm-hmm. them, but still, you know what? It, it's like, I need to just kind of like, you know, instead of looking outward, look a little inward. And and probably in the last couple of months, I've made more of a concerted effort Mm -hmm. to just kind of be like, you know what, Lonnie, you're here for you. You're not there to, you know, to watch somebody else work out. Totally. I mean, I'm, I'm completely victim to that. Not to that, not to that degree, but there'll be times where I'll be lifting something and I I know it's heavier than I should be lifting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, why am I, why am I lifting this heavy, you know, this thing when I'm not getting the full range of motion, I'm not, I'm not working the correct muscle group. Nobody's going to care if it's 10 pounds lighter, you know, like nobody's ever going to be like, Oh my God, I can't believe he did that. He, you know, what a legend, like nobody's ever going to think that. So like it doesn't do me any good to ego lift or, or or to lift for, you know, the validation of others when nobody cares. Yeah. Right. So I'll drop the weight and I'll get a I'll get a better easier workout. Right. You know, because it's the truth. Nobody. I mean, I mean, and and if they do care, then then they're just the weird person. Right. You know. Like, you know, for me as a for a mom looking on the outside in, mm-hmm. I absolutely saw like when you started working out and you started doing like the jujitsu mm-hmm. and boxing your confidence level yeah. went through the roof. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it's because like, you know, it, it, you have to like make yourself comfortable at being uncomfortable. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, well, especially Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and especially boxing, I've always been a huge advocate of people learning martial arts and, or yeah, combat sports, you know, because what are people most afraid of? The most afraid of conflict. Yeah. And so the easiest way I think to overcome that fear is to, get into a conflict, right? Is to be used, you know, get comfortable by being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And once you kind of start doing that a little bit more, I think you really kind of learn more about yourself than you do anything else. And you're like, okay, well I am comfortable with defending myself. I Mm -hmm. am comfortable and I trust me and my body on getting me out of any situation, Right. you know, and it really does, you know, because I used to think, I used to walk through all, you know, life like, oh, I got to be really, really careful not to make this person upset because this person might be angry. And if this person's angry, he might hit me. Yeah. You know, I used to kind of constantly walk around with this victim kind of mentality. Like with your head down, kind of my head down. down. Yeah, mm-hmm. if I wasn't seen, I wasn't, you know, if, if nobody could see me, then I wasn't the subject of any, um, you know, r- ridicule Confi- or confrontation. confrontation. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. I don't want to be in a fight. I don't know how to defend myself. I don't, I don't trust myself enough. I'm not confident enough. And it wasn't until, you know, you start learning these tool, these tools and you start learning these, um, the ability to defend yourself. Then you start understanding that, you know, listen, this is who, this is who, what I am as a person. This is my character. Yeah. You know, this, this is me. And, you know, I, obviously, you know, like I don't want to ever be in a fight. I've never been in a fight and I don't want to be in a fight. But if I was to find myself in a confrontation, I, I would trust myself enough to, 
to be okay with with the confrontation at hand. Yeah. And and in like and it's interesting too because you even when doing research, I never even thought about the boxing and the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu until you mentioned it. But it really is the case, and it, it, it is such a confidence builder, mm-hmm. you know. And it really, really is super, super, super duper cool. And and if I ever have kids, uh, I I would love to put them in combat sports because not only does it like you know, it's that physical exertion. Not only is, are they getting that stimulation, but they're developing confidence. They're developing, you know, a sense of self-worth. And, you know, the last thing I would want, like, is, you know, like my, if I ever have a daughter that she feels like she can't say no because somebody might hurt her, you know, where she can just, you know, she can neither, you know, be confident enough to be like, no, you know, I, I what are you going to do about it? You're not going to do anything because I can kill you. Yeah, no is no. No is no, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, I definitely want my children to, have the ability to say no without being afraid of, um, you know, any violent um, reaction. You know, off subject a little bit, but I was thinking about that the other day. I was driving down to, um, gosh, I think I was driving down to somewhere towards Mm -hmm. Marshalls. Yeah. And in the back of my mind, I was like, what would, what would happen if, you know, let's just say I was um, accosted. Yeah. And I was like, truthfully, I am like one scenario, mm-hmm. one word, one incident away from just being like every single pain in my life would come flat. You know, I think that it would it, for me and I, I never hope to be in that situation, mm-hmm. but I think I would go berserk. Yeah. You know, I think it would just be the tipping point of being like, because I've learned to get over the hurt mm-hmm. and I've learned to not, you know, um, carry it around with me Mm. on a daily basis but i was just thinking about that and i'm like no i would i think i would start chewing on their face yeah well you know you know like that's it's an interesting point because you know whenever you when you're always like oh well if i was to ever get in a fight i would just lose control right and i don't know if that's the best thing because i think the the scariest person is the one who's constantly in control you know who kind of like harnesses that kind of like you know they they don't let their emotions kind of get the better of them but no, you're totally right, though. I mean, you know, but if somebody was trying to abduct me, I would. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. what I meant. That's I, what you meant. Yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't mean like having like a verbal confrontation. Yeah. No, verbal. No, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't. No, go ahead. I was just saying like, you know, like, you know, like you, you, you kind of run the scenario through. I think, I think keeping a level head, I think you're like, cause if you look at the UFC fighters, you know, like when they, when they take a hit, they kind of just like, they kind of just like shrug it off. They're, they're they're so calm with being punched that they're, they're constantly in control of their, yeah. their mental well-being. You see, because typically what happens when somebody is like coming mm-hmm. at you, yeah. the, the natural instinct is to try to get away. Sure. So the attacker is expecting the other person to try to get away. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, I just think in my mind, I would just be like, F- you, I'm going to attack you. Oh, sure, sure. You know what yeah, I yeah, mean? Yeah, I see what you mean. That's yeah. just kind of like... But then again, I never want to say like, oh, I would be so brave and I do this because yeah. I can't stand it when people are like, oh, you should have done this and you mm-hmm. should have done that. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, the situations are different from everyone. Yeah. But, but like, you know, but that but having that confidence to feel like, oh, well, you know, hey, listen, you're not going to treat me this way or mm-hmm. like hey, more so like not so much like, oh, we're going to fight. But it's more of just standing up for yourself and more of that like. Yeah, I'm a human being and my feelings matter and I'm going to I'm going to stand up for Yeah, I've been hit before. What are you going to do? It ain't going to be new. Well, no, it's not so much that. It's it's not so much But it's more the mentality because a lot of times where I'm looking at it yeah. is from a woman. Sure. A lot of times people if they're going to victimize a you know, if they're mm-hmm. going to go after a woman, they're going to go after a woman and expect again, you know, like a um like almost like a oh no like you a know. meek coy response yeah. yeah you know they expect you to withdraw mm-hmm. and then they become the attacker sure. but when you have that just confidence or when you have that kind of like i'm a f-ing basket case mm-hmm. and if you fight me i am going to hurt you back you know they're yeah. not expecting that sure i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't say a basket case but i would say somebody who's who's like I said, like more confident with themselves, you know, because <laughs> I'm going to be know. like, I'm extremely I, I'm, confident. Yeah. I'm going to f- attack no, you and chew your I'm, nose you know, off. Cause I'm like, you know, cause I'm like, Oh yeah, I want somebody to develop a, you know, confidence and being, you know, with, you know, defending themselves. And you're like, I'm just going to go badger and I'm going <laughs> to non cross. So like, I, I, I think we're on the same page, yeah. but we're also not on the same page. <laughs> exactly. I'm the one that's going cuckoo for a couple yeah, of So I'm like, Oh, like, you know, develop combat sports are a great way to develop discipline and self-control. And you're like, just scratch them. 
<laughs> just go yeah, shit crazy. Yeah, just go bad shit crazy. But yeah, no, I want, you know, I definitely want my kids yeah. to, to have that confidence. So going back to your original subject, mm-hmm. I wanted to give you another observation. Sure. So again, as your mom looking from the outside in, mm-hmm. I've seen your progression of working out from, mm-hmm. you know, again, you started with the boxing and the jujitsu yeah. and it really helped increase your confidence. Yeah. And then I th- saw that you were working out because you were, you weren't really happy with who you were. You didn't, yeah. I, I didn't feel like you liked the person that you saw in the mirror looking back to sure, you. Totally. And you were very much like, I want to, I want to be chiseled. I want to mm-hmm. look like this and I want to look like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas now your progression is like, Hey, you know what? I like me and I'm working out and I just feel good about it. Yeah. And it's been, it's to me, I've seen this progression in you mm-hmm. with your confidence, you know, your own self-esteem, mm-hmm. um, kind of, that's fair. Kind That's of a fair assumption along. because you know, like everybody, you know, everybody who wants to go to the gym wants to have like that Brad Pitt Fight Club kind of body, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what I, and that's what I told Des, my trainer, like I want to look like Brad Pitt on Fight Club kind of thing. And you know, you, I, I there'd be times where like you know I'd be working out and I'd be like, oh, I, I just don't see the results, and I'd I'd kind of get in my head and I'd kind of be a little discouraged. And you know, through that, through, through, like you say, like the course of finding yourself through the course of, you know, being who I am, you know, it, it's, it turns into, okay, well I'm going to be the best version of myself Mm -hmm. and and the self I am right now is going to put out this, this level of effort, you know, like if I, and and, and like, instead of giving yourself like this impossible long-term goal, you give yourself smaller short-term goals. Like, okay, today I'm going to, you know, curl 55 pounds. You know, if I, if, and I'm going to curl 55 pounds for the next couple of weeks and then by week four, I'm going to curl 60. Right. You know, and you, you give yourself these small term goals and I think you're overall a lot more happier mm-hmm. than like the, oh, well, it's been six months and I don't look like Brad Pitt yet. Right. You know, and that's, and that's the kind of mentality that I had. It was like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to lift really, really heavy. And then one day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to look like Brad Pitt. Whereas now it's like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to, I'm going to work out really, really hard. And then I'm going to improve, um, in this goal through the course of this so many weeks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because I mean, even though I don't really have like any goals of how much I want to lift or, or how much I, whatever weight I'm using. Yeah. I mean, there were times when you'd be like, okay, you know, lift up this empty bar Mm -hmm. and I'd be like, yeah. And I couldn't do it. Yeah. And you know, now I can add weight to Mm -hmm. it. So I, I mean, to me with the whole correlation of like working out with mental health, Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a great way to release it. Yeah. Um, but I would hope that nobody would fall into that trap of like unrealistic goals sure. or something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, but there's also, I mean, like just to point out when you were like lifting the weight, there were also times when I'm like, oh, mom, just go heavier. And you're like, well, I can't do that. And you're mm-hmm. like, well, no, you totally can. And you would end up doing it and you would, you kind of surprised yourself, you know? So that's one of the cool things too about it. Like mentally is it, it makes you break through um, barriers. Yeah. It makes you break through like these, these records. Yeah. And, no, no. I, yeah. I mean, definitely there's benefits to yeah. it. No, I, lo- I love it. Yeah. It's fun. Well, good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that t- I love working out with you. Well, good. It's nice. To, it's nice to have somebody else there with you. I will say that. And that's one of the coolest thing too, is it kind of helps you kind of, you know, it makes you have to depend on somebody else. And so it's nice to work out with somebody else. And See, to me personally, I think it was a great catalyst for starting like this form of communication with you yeah. to where we were kind of like almost, well, you were, you were training me, but we're, we're most like, but we're more like even partners. It's, yeah. you're not looking at me like, well, here's my mom. Yeah. And I'm not like, well, here's my son. Sure. We're looking at it more like, well, here's my gym partner. Yeah, exactly. You know? and, and, and like in, you know, through the course of a couple of months, you know, I'd say like one or two months, you, you develop the rapport, you mm-hmm. know, you know, you, you, you get it. And, and now instead of being like, okay, well, in this exercise, we're going to do this, 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 this. It's more of like, okay, mom, you're doing really great. But next rep, you know, keep your elbows in or keep your elbows out or, you know, try to focus this muscle. And you're like, okay, every sure. single time I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? He's just nitpicking mm-hmm. my routine. Yeah. Well, cause but I do it. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, you do it enough to know that like, oh, okay, cool. Her, her elbows are flared out. She's going to, you know, she's getting supporting muscles from like, you know, this muscle group Yeah. versus like, okay, we're going to try to isolate this muscle and yeah. make it harder. Remember that um, one time you were trying to get me to like to do a squat? Yeah. We <laughs> still, we, we still have to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. So Well, my back was so tight. I couldn't. Yeah. So you're like, why are you doing yeah, when that? You to, yeah. When you had to sit down on the thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. But like, you know, it's. And but that's what's cool is like it breaks through those mental barriers and it just makes you a better person. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I like it. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, so I think next week I'm going to, uh, my subject for next week is going to be, um, it, it's the duality of getting rid of childhood trauma and adult trauma at the same time. Mm. You know, healing one to heal the other. Okay, I like it. You know, it's really hard to heal an adult issue if yeah. you're still dealing with a childhood issue. Yeah, absolutely. And you know it, and it's like, um, it's not that you have to sit there and relive it all the time, but there's a correlating factor to healing both to, to yeah. have some some forward momentum. Yeah, no, I look forward to it. Have you yeah. been researching? Yes, I am going to, um, I can't say a whole lot, but I'm yeah. going to be referencing two different books. Okay, cool. I look mm -hmm. forward to it. Yeah. And so for right now I have the books and I'm going to be picking a couple of subjects where I can take like one subject mm -hmm. and look at it through the eyes of healing your childhood yeah. and then through like understanding why you're doing it as an adult. I love it. I think that's super cool. Yeah. Awesome. You well, tell cool. you what, you give me an assignment. I'm going to try my bestest. Well, I look forward to it. Yeah. Well, today's was really interesting and I really appreciate it, Robert, because yeah. I think a lot of times we let the fear of starting something new yeah. stop us from an avenue yeah. that can actually really mentally help us yeah it's, the, it's just that fear of the unknown kind of thing yeah you know, it brings so. me back to a, uh, a quote that i told you the other day but don't in it the quote was don't st don't judge your beginning journey by the pro um, progress of somebody who's been doing it for years yeah. so going into a gym not knowing how to do it you shouldn't mm. compare yourself to somebody who's been going for years for sure. everybody had everybody starts somewhere absolutely yeah i yeah. love it well, good. Awesome. Well, do you want to tell them where to find us? I absolutely do. You can find Robert as Robert Robert Pike Pike on Instagram, Sherbert on TikTok, YouTube, mm. and now on now Twitch. Twitch yeah. You can find me as Gray Hair and Tattoos across all channels and then Emotional Baggage on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you can hang out with me and see the world through my eyes. I love it. All right, everybody. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.